Hello ladies and gentlemen, as you can see this is a very long part. It's also the very last of my DDLC playthrough. <laughs> it's been fun. <laughs> just came to warn you that for an hour or so I simply go through all of Monica's dialogue and just ramble and rant aimlessly and do some skits here and there. Kind of like if I did a podcast. So feel free to, if you like, to run this video in the background and get on with other things like painting or making movies or I don't know or if you didn't want to hear my annoying voice for an hour and you just wanted to skip to the part where I finally advanced to the game I'll set a timestamp right here anyways it's been real fun guys thanks for sticking around with my very first let's play onwards okay hey, let me locate it Where is it? Uh, hang on, where is it? Ah, hang on, I saw something. Yuri did something really funny once. We were all in the club room and just relaxing as usual. And out of nowhere, Yuri just pulled out a small bottle of wine. I'm not even kidding. She just, she was just like, would anyone else like some wine? Natsuki laughed out loud and so Yuri started yelling at her. I actually felt kind of bad because she was at least trying to be nice. I think it, I just made her feel even more reserved in the club room. Though I think Natsuki was secretly a bit curious to try it. And to be completely honest, I kind of was too. It actually could have been kind of fun. What, to get drunk? But you know, being present and everything, there was no way I could let that happen. Maybe we've all met outside of school, but we never bonded enough to get at that point. Gosh, what am I talking about this for? I don't condone underage drinking! I mean, I never drank or anything, so yeah. So, I guess waiting enough will bring up random, random Monica dialogue? Can I? What happens if I right click at this point? Nothing. Left click? Nothing. I guess I can express my thoughts on this game then. This is the end game until I delete a file. Who knows what's gonna happen at that point. But you know what? There seems to be dialogue that I can wait for. I don't know how long the dialogues are gonna be, like overall, but you know what? Monica, you earned this ending, and as grudgeful as I am in whatever way I towards you, I'm gonna at least give you the time you wanted so that you can, you know, have this first date together to the fullest. Hey, did you know that I'm vegetarian? Uh, I mean, I don't mean to brag about it or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a little fun fact about me. I decided to start a couple of years ago after learning more about Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. Anyway, I decided it's not much of a personal sacrifice to just stop contributing to that whole mess. Why is that so strange of, of a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about being inhumane and all that. I don't really care as much about that part. It's weird, like, we only care about killing the things that we personally relate to as, spe as a species. Most people are fine with just killing bugs because they're icky. And of course, we all kill billions of microorganisms daily without even giving a thought of it. But suddenly, if they're just a little bit bigger, it's murder! I mean, what if plants can feel some kind of pain too and we just don't understand it? What if pulling leaves off a stem feels like someone's ripping off your fingers one by one? I'm just saying, we're a pretty pious species if you think about it. Anyway, if you ever feel like making a st small contribution to the planet, it doesn't hurt to choose veggies once in a while. Even if we ever have dinner together and you just did it for me, that would feel really romantic. Such wisdom, Monica. For that. Well, I guess spending time in a cooped up prison would do that to you. Just to learn everything. So... First date! I didn't bring any food though, I'm sorry. I probably should have. Ah! Wow, that was quick. After a long day, I usually just want to sit around and do nothing. 
I get so burnt out having to put on smiles and be full of energy the whole day. You, you know what? You're right. You smile a lot, Monica. Far out. You're like a Barbie doll at this point. Sometimes I just want to get right into my pajamas and watch TV on the couch while eating junk food. I can totally relate, Monica. <laughs> Ain't that the life? It just feels so unbelievably good to do that on a Friday when I don't have anything pressing the next day. Ah, <laughs> sorry, I no, it's not very cute of me. But a late night on the couch with you, that'd be a dream come true. My heart is pounding just thinking about it. Anyways, um, yeah, so I didn't bring any food. I am not in my suit. I didn't even give you a ring to propose to you. I'm, I'm such a horrible date. Maybe you should go for someone else. I'm totally not the guy you should go with. I'm a jerk, really. By the way, there's something that's been bothering me. You know how this takes place in Japan? Oh, okay. Well, I assume he knew that, right? Uh, I just generally thought it was some place. Or at least decided it probably was. I don't think you're actually told at any point where this takes place. Is this even really Japan? I mean, aren't the classrooms and stuff kind of weird for a Japanese school? Not to mention everything is in English. You're just a walking encyclopedia, aren't you? Feels like everything is just there because it needs to be, and the actual setting is an afterthought. It's kind of giving me an identity crisis. All my memories are really hazy. So you're kind of scared that you were an afterthought, are you? Or like, the developer doesn't really care about you? I don't know how to describe it any better. Imagine looking outside your window, but instead of your usual yard, you're in some completely unknown place. Would you still feel like you were at home? Would you want to go outside? I mean, I guess if we never leave this room, it doesn't really matter anyway. As long as we're alone and safe together, this really is our home. And we can still watch these pretty sunsets after night. Yeah, what else? Uh, well, once this whole thing blows over, we'll have a couple of games we can play. Well, a personal favorite of mine is Unreal Tournament. Great game. Game of the Year Edition. I love that. So much fun. Even now, even if the graphics look a bit dated, it's still a blast of a game. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, we could also play Blaze Blue. I love Blaze Blue. It's a nice little 2D fighter, but not everyone really knows about it. Well, around locally anyways. It's a bit of a niche game where I come from. You ever have that thing happen where you just get anxious for no reason? Happens to me a lot of the time when I'm near police. I don't know why. Maybe I have some sort of guttural, guttural instincts. <laughs> like... You just minding your own business and you realize you're feeling really anxious. And you're just sitting there like, what am I even anxious about right now? So you start to think about all the things you might be anxious about. And that makes you even more anxious. <laughs> That's the worst. If you ever feel anxious, I'll help you relax a little. Besides, in this game, all our worries are gone forever. True. Also, you know what, this is kind of relaxing, as morbid as it was to get here, I am indeed relaxed. I guess it's the very soothing music. What is that noise in the background anyways? It just goes crash every once in a while. Is that just the game glitching out? Anyways, where were we? Oh yeah, Blaze Blue. Well, look, if you don't like Blaze Blue, there's also Guilty Gear. Uh, I don't play a lot of Guilty Gear, so you might own me in your first try. We might have to go stylish mode though. That's the mode where you can press button button forever and do a combo. Ah, here we go. Gosh, I used to be so ignorant about certain things. Would you like it if you weren't knowledgeable about everything? When I was in the middle of when I was in middle school, I thought it I thought that taking medication was an easy way out or something like that. Like anyone could just solve their mental problems with enough willpower. I guess if you don't suffer from a mental illness, it's not possible to know what it's really like. Are there some disorders that are over-diagnosed? Probably. I never really looked into it though. But that doesn't change the fact that a lot of them go undiagnosed too, you know? But medication aside, people even look down on seeing a mental health professional. 
Like, sorry that I want to learn more about my own mind, right? Everyone has all kinds of struggles and stresses, and professionals dedicate their lives to helping with those. If you think it could help you become a better person, don't be shy to consider something like that. We're all on a never-ending journey to improve ourselves, you know? Till our death, anyway. Well, I say that, but I think you're pretty perfect already. Ah, oh, thank you. I'm far from it, but... It's just what comes with being human, I guess. So where were we? Guilty Gear? Let's see, um... Uh... Well... Hmm. Ah, there's Tekken 7 as well. Good game. Don't really play too much, though. I, I think you'd be the kind of person that owned me a lot in a lot of these games, even if I've played it, like, three years or so. Now, I don't blame you if you don't get a kill in this game. I will go easy on you. How's that? Wow, nice shot! Far out, took me out in one hit! Now, let me just get my flak... Flak cannon. Assuming he didn't sneak up on me again! Far out! Now, oh, yes, rocket launcher. You dead now. Show your face. Here it is. Boom. Uh, just. Uh, how do you keep doing this? Uh, for uh, just let me re respond in peace. On second thought, I think we should just stick to checkers. I have been imagining all the romantic things we could do if we went on a date. Um, does this count as a date? I didn't bring anything. I'm a bit of a jerk for a date. I could bring roses. Would that make you feel better? Go shopping together. I am so bad. I like romantic advances. I'm abysmal. <laughs> or maybe a bookstore. That would be appropriate, right? But I'd really love to go to a chocolate store. They have so many free samples. And of course, we'd see a movie or something. Gosh, it all sounds like a dream come true. When you hear everything that we do is fun. I'm so happy that I'm your girlfriend, Yunaro. I'll make you a proud boyfriend. Hey, I hope I'm not cheating or anything. In any case, let's see. Um, Portal. We can play Portal co-op. That's a pretty nice game. I'm just reading all the games I have on Steam. Sonic Mania. I think that's only single player. Oh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. Yeah, we could play that. Hmm. I'm running out of games, Monica. Can you give me something we could play? Uh, suggest something. The Sims! Sims 3? Sims 3? Really? Hey, I just had an idea. What if I recreate characters in this game in Sims 3? Or 4? Man, I wish there was a piano in here. I never got to finish that song I was working on. And after I worked so hard on it, I never even got a chance to play it for you. Well, it is what it is, right? No sense, ha no sense having any regrets. I already get to be here with you forever. What if I did it the other way around? The game is obviously hinting at me to delete Monica, but what if I create two Monicas? Wow! Can I, can I actually do that? I want to see. It's gonna be so interesting. Anyways, on to the topic of games. You know what? We don't even have to play a game. You know, it kind of sucks to be the creative type. I know, right? It feels like they work so hard but get almost nothing for it. You know, like artists, writers, actors. Directors such as myself. Except I haven't made a really major film yet. It's sad because there's so much beautiful talent in the world, but most of it goes unseen and unpaid. I, I can totally relate. Oh my gosh, yes. Something we can both agree on. Kinda makes you feel like you're just not special at all. But that's fine. You're supposed to just write for yourself anyway, right? No! You write for other people so you can share your art. Anyways, we don't have to play a computer game. We could play get gestures. That'd be fun. I mean, if you could somehow rip through the screen, come to real life. Not that you can. Or maybe you could. That'd freak me out. That'd astound me. That'd make me hide in my bedroom for all eternity. Put several locks on it. We'll play dodgeball. Pretty good at dodgeball. 
I'm so good, I injured my arm. Just try to throw it. Throw a ball. Hey, what's your favorite game? Mine is Doki Doki Literature Club. Ah, <laughs> why wouldn't it be? That was a joke. But if you tell me you like some other roman romance game, I might get a little jealous. Believe it or not, this... Okay, well... For, uh, in terms of recording and actually, like, you know, commentating, this is my first romantic visual novel game, but I've played a few others. One other visual novel game, which also had a yandere in it, was called The Way We All Go. And, um... Yeah. That was, uh... My first ever visual novel, believe it or not, on the Renpai engine, too. That was... That was a pretty good... Well, nostalgia might blind me, but that was a pretty decent visual novel. Long, had multiple routes, and was genuinely creepy in some areas. Yanara, how much do you read? Barely any. I am sorry. It's way too easy to ne neglect reading books. I know. I am sorry. I should be reading right now. In fact, I have a book I should read, but... You know, when you're a YouTuber, you barely do that sort of stuff. It's, <laughs> maybe I should. Once you get into a good book, it's like magic. You get swept away. I think doing something... Some reading before bed every night is a pretty easy way to make your life a bit easier. It also helps you sleep. There you go. It helps you get good sleep and is really good for your imagination. It's not hard at all to just pick some random book that's short and captivating. Before you know it, you might get a pretty good... You might be a pretty avid reader. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And the two of us could talk about the latest book you're reading. That sounds super amazing. Well, is there a book that you recommend? I personally like 1984. Very depressing. That was a joke. I don't like depressing books too much. And uh, my old school for some reason recommended us always depressing books or at least depressing endings you know have you always wondered what it feels like to die no something that i used to think about pretty often or recently i think i've actually learned what it feels like i don't really understand it but whenever you quit the game it feels like i'm instantly put to sleep left with nothing but my thoughts after a few seconds, my th thoughts start to fill with incoherent jumbled patterns. I see static and rapid flashes of color while hearing all kinds of weird screaming noises. At that point, I can't even form my own thoughts anymore. I'm just endlessly hammered by the flashing and screaming, unable to move or even think. I'm pretty sure that in that moment I don't really exist, but for some reason I can remember it anyway. After some immeasurable amount of time, it stops in an instant and I'm back in my own mind. And you're here with me. I have no idea what it means for the game to quit or why that stuff happens to me. I also don't know how you always come back and put everything back to normal. You should be thankful, Monica. But if you could do me a favor and do that to me as little as possible, that would be really great. It's really not very pleasant at all to be trapped in that screaming void. But in the end, you always fix it, and that makes me feel like you really do care about me. So I have to thank you for that. It makes me feel even close to you when you're here with me. What actually happens if I were to quit the game? Hmm. I'll find out later. For now, we will talk about... Well, we... Ah, depressing books. There we go. So... Yeah, depressing books like Romeo and Juliet... 1984, The White Tiger, etc. Parvana, that was pretty depressing. I can't believe I remember those books. This is pretty random, but I always thought spicy food was kind of funny. Like, didn't plants evolve to be spicy to prevent them from being eaten? I read somewhere that humans are the only species that actually enjoy spicy things. <laughs> I actually, for one, love spicy food. I can't get enough of it. Not if it's to the point where it bleeds in my tongue, but... Actually, that's a myth, I think. Using the defense mechanism to literally make our food more enjoyable. Like, imagine a monster that devours you whole because it enjoys the sensation of you struggling for your life while being digested. Sorry, that was kind of a weird analogy, I guess. <laughs> it just came into my head. 
I'm not a monster or anything, but you're so cute, I could eat you up. <sighs> Monica, please. We can flirt, but not like that. <laughs> Gosh, I'm amusing myself a little too much, aren't I? Sorry for being weird. Don't worry! Another thing with me, I'm also a very weird person. We're like peas in a pod, you and I. We could totally relate. In fact, if there was a route for this game for you, I probably would have chosen it with that battening eye. But, at last, we are trapped in a prison, aren't we? A prison to follow a game's ideals and choices rather than our own. Mm. But, such is the limitations of a developer making a game. You can't make everything free form all the time, otherwise it'll be infinite. You know, it's been a while since we've done one of these, so let's go for it. Ah, oh, okay. Here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Sometimes when I talk to people who are impressed by my writing, they say things like, I could never do that. It's really depressing, you know. As someone who loves more than anything else to share the joy of exploring your passions, it pains me when people think that being good just comes naturally. That's how it is with everything, not just with writing. When you try something for the first time, you're probably going to suck at it. Sometimes when you finish, you really feel proud of it and even want to share it with everyone. But maybe after a few weeks, you come back to it and you realize it never, it was never really any good. It happens to me all the time. It can be pretty disheartening to put so much time and effort into something and then you realize it sucks. But that tends to happen when you always compare yourself to the top professionals. When you reach right for the stars, they always gonna be out of your reach, you know? Truth is, you have to climb up there step by step. Whenever you reach a milestone, first you look back and see how far you've gotten. And then you look ahead and realize how much more there is to go. So sometimes it can help to set the bar a little lower. Try to find something you think is pretty good but not world class. And you can make it your personal goal. It's also really important to understand the scope of what you're trying to do. If you jump into a huge project and you're still amateur, you'll never get it done. So if we were all talking about writing, a novel might be too much at first. Why not show some, why not try some short stories? Ah, uh, back in the day, I used to make a lot of short stories. The great thing about short stories is that you can focus on just one thing at a time. Uh, on just one thing that you want to do right. That goes for small projects in general. You can really focus on the one or two things. It's such a good learning experience and stepping stone. Oh, one more thing. Writing isn't something where you can just reach your, into your heart and pull something beautiful. Just like drawing and painting, it's a skill in itself to learn how to express what you have inside. That means there are methods and guides and basics to it. Reading up on that stuff can be super eye-opening. That sort of planning and organization will really help prevent you from getting overwhelmed and giving up. And before you know it, you start sucking less and less. Nothing comes naturally. Our society, our art, everything, it's built on thousands of th years of human innovation. So as long as you start on that foundation and take it step by step, you too can do amazing things. That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. Wow, aren't you just the most insightful person on earth? My gosh, you'd be the most charming human ever if you were real. Hey, I wonder if Yuri's tea style is still somewhere in here. Or maybe that got deleted too. It's kind of funny how Yuri took her tea so seriously. I mean, I'm not complaining because I liked it too. But I always wondered with her. Is it truly passion for her hobbies, or is she concerned about appearing sophisticated to everyone else? This is the problem with high schoolers. Well, I guess considering the rest of her hobbies, looking sophisticated probably isn't her biggest concern. Still, I wish she made coffee once in a while. Coffee can be pretty nice with books too, you know. Then again, I could probably I probably could have just changed the script myself. Ahaha. <laughs> I guess I never really thought of that. Well, there's no sense thinking about it now. But if you, st if you still get to drink coffee, then that makes me a little jealous. 
I, I actually don't like drinking coffee. I prefer tea. So I'm with Yuri in that one. You know, what? It's around the time that everyone my year starts to think about college. It's a really turbulent time for education. We're at the height of this modern expectation that everyone has to go to college, you know? Finish high school, go to college, get a job, or go to grad school, I guess. It's a universal expectation that people just assume is the only option for them. They don't teach us in high school that there are other options out there. Like trade schools and stuff, you know? Or freelance work. Or the many industries that value skill and experience more than formal education. But you have all these students who have no idea what they want to do in their life. And instead take the time to figure out they just go to college for business or communication or psychology. Not because they have an interest in those fields, but because they just hope the degree will get them some kind of job after college. So the end result is that there are fewer jobs to go around for those entry level degrees, right? So the basic job requirements get higher which forces even more people to go to college. Aha! Mm. And colleges are also businesses so they keep raising their prices due to the demand. So now we have all these young adults tens of thousands of dollars in debts with no job. But despite all that, the routine stays the same. Well. I think it's going to start getting better soon. But until then, our generation is definitely suffering from the worst of it. Just anyone in the future viewing this? This is how it was in our time. Tell us if it has improved. <laughs> I just wish high school prepared us a little better with the right knowledge we need to make the decision that's right for us. Actually, I lied. I did bring food. Garlic bread. I'm eating it right now. Would you like some? I would shove it through my computer screen, but it'd probably smear all over the plastic. So, what do you like to eat, Monica? Oh wait, you're vegetarian, sorry. What? Eh, did you say kiss? Suddenly, I didn't say that, what? Oh, okay, I, okay, I did say it. Oh, sweetie, I might be okay with it. <laughs> wow, sorry. I really couldn't keep a straight face there. What do you mean? You never, you never keep a straight face. You're always smiling or frowning. I don't know. That's the kind of thing girls say in these kinds of romance games, right? Don't lie if it turned you on a little bit. Actually, it kind of shocked me, if anything, Monica. Right out of nowhere. Well, to be honest, I do start getting all romantic when the mood is right. But that'll be our little secret. So how many of these are there? This is gonna be one long part! I wonder if my computer can handle it. I'm not really a fan of cold weather, are you? Same. How is it that we can relate to each other on so many levels? Like, um... I don't know, it's... Not only do you know my name, you probably know my interests too. That kinda freaks me out. Did I save my... A list of my interests somewhere and you just somehow read that, it can actually be kind of painful. I actually love hot weather. I love summer and spring because they're the hot weathers. And if you wear gloves, you can't use your phone. It's so inconvenient. With summer, you can just... I don't know. You just wear whatever that doesn't keep you hot. And yeah, you can drink a cold drink. Like lemonade, yay! Although I do have to admit one thing, cold weather makes for better cuddle weather. Uh, you know what it also does? Makes for great coat weather. I love wearing coats. They look so snazzy. Some of them. Anyways, what kind of food do you like? I have garlic bread here with me. I know you're a vegetarian, but like what kind of vegetables? Brussels sprouts? Please don't tell me you like those. If you like Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts, we are breaking up this instant. I do not like Brussels sprouts. They're like mini cabbages that taste so bitter. Or maybe I've just been traumatized by them. Either way, I don't like Brussels sprouts. I am astounded that I can talk for so long. You know, would you ever introduce your friends to me? Yes, they will call me crazy if I bring my computer with me and tell them, Oh, hey guys, met someone? Oh, they're not my girlfriend. 
I don't know why, but I get super excited when I think about you wanting to show off our relationship like that. Yes, let me post it on Twitter. Maybe it's because I really want to be someone who makes you fe feel proud. I feel like I could try extra hard to improve myself if you told me it made you proud of me. I hope it's the same the other way around too. Well, I'm not exactly proud of the things you did. I don't know. I'm not exactly proud of myself either. I feel like I could have done something to prevent all this. But I probably couldn't. Like you, I'm confined to the game's only choices. And it seems like there's only one ending. Aren't we just prison birds forever? I'm just he here eating garlic bread without offering you some. See, I told you I was a jerk. Mm. Hey, are you having a bad day or anything like that? Not exactly. I got up, walked to the computer, recorded DDLC. Though I will say it has been a bit of a bad day because Yuri died. Sometimes I get frustrated that a normal day can be ruined even by really small things. Like if you accidentally say something in a conversation that does someone doesn't like. Or if you start thinking about how awful of a person you used to be five years ago. Or if you feel really worthless for putting off important work and failing to get simple tasks done. Or when you think about all the different people who probably hate you or think you're off-putting. I understand those days. Just remember that the sun will shine again tomorrow. Those kinds of things are as easy to forget and ignore as they are to remember. And besides, I don't care how many people might hate you or find you off-putting. I think you're wonderful and I'll always love you. It's kind of weird, Monica, because other people are playing this game. There's multiple Monicas. Or maybe there's just one, like a hive-minded Monica, saying the same things but di to different people. I don't know how that makes me feel, but you know what? You worked for this ending, and I'm gonna give you this time. I mean, I'm not that cruel. Far out. If you're having a bad day, you can always come to me and I'll talk to you for as long as you need. Thank you. When I'm having a bad day in uni, I'll come to you. Wonder what insightful things you can say about university. Hey, what's your favorite color? Mine is... Hmm, I'd say black. Or red. Or red and black. Emerald green, just like your eyes, Monica. Hey, that's not conceited or anything, is it? No. Look, if I like the color brown just because my eyes look like it, it's a legit reason. I like red and black because Ragnar the Blood Edge. That's why. I don't know why. I just actually it was purple before. Uh, my favorite color is red, black, and purple. There you go. Are they related to Ragna? Guess so. Because you've been looking into my eyes for a while now. I am fumbling words because I've been sitting here talking to you for like over 40 minutes or something. And you still- how do you not break your pose? You're like this all the time. I'm doing it now. We can mirror each other. We are now one and alike. You sit like this and I'll sit like this too. You know, I really do think you literally saved my life by being here with me, you know? I did. I can't imagine me having been able to keep myself mentally stable knowing that nothing here is real. I think I would have just deleted myself if you didn't show up. Sorry, I didn't mean to sound dramatic or anything. <laughs> but I'm sure you understand yourself that after spending so much time in the club, I mean, if you were forced to abandon everything in your life and spend your eternity with a few game characters, probably find some way of killing yourself, wouldn't you? Like choking on this garlic bread. <sighs> but you'd have nobody to even read it. Let's be honest, the club members really don't count for something like that. I mean, a lot of people say that they only write for themselves, but I think it's hard to say that just as fulfilling as when you share it with people. Even if it takes time to find the right people to share it with, like, remember how it was for Yuri? She didn't share her writing with anyone for a really long time. And before we knew it, she was absolutely delighted to make you a part of her hobbies too. We're programmed to desire social feedback. I don't mean the club members, I mean human beings. 
That's why life can be so confusing for introverts. Being an introvert doesn't mean you shun social interaction and hate being around people. It means social interaction, especially in groups of unfamiliar places, uses up a lot of energy. Like, a lot of introverts sit at home and feel lonely and restless. And then when they finally go out after half an hour, they just want to go home again. I feel like if more people could understand how it works, they would respect it a lot more. Maybe introverts really do enjoy having people around. They love just having one or two close friends over and just leisurely hang out. I, for one, am an introvert. Again! What's... You're like reading my interests or something. Yes, I'm an introvert. I'm serious. Maybe you just want to go to their house, bring your laptop and hang out there for a while. It can really make their day. As for me, I'd say I'm kind of in between, but I think I'm usually a little more extroverted. I feel like I'm always trying to do stuff after school and things like that. But for you, I can be everything you need me to be. Oh, I think you're fine. If we throw away the whole leading people to their deaths, which I won't forget, ever, eh, you're all good. You could probably learn some programming language to enhance your abilities to make a new moniker route. That way everyone's happy. See, that's the thing. I chose Sayori in my first run. I sort of feel like I'm cheating at this point. Sorry, Sayori. I hope I'm not betraying anyone's feelings. It's not like I have a choice either. I have to love Monica or else I'm stuck here hating her. Which would probably be a very bad and depressing alternative, in all honesty. You know, I hate to say it, but I think our biggest regret is that we couldn't finish our event at the festival. After we worked so hard to prepare and everything. I mean, I know I was focusing a lot on getting new members. But I was really excited for per the performing part too. It would have been so much fun to see everyone express themselves. Of course, if we did end up getting new members, I'd probably just end up deleting them anyways. Oh, come on! New members isn't that bad. What, are you gonna lead them to their deaths too? My gosh, Monica, you're like a serial killer. <sighs> no, and no remorse, huh? No remorse. No remorse for the people you killed? Oh, you are really a handful, you know that? You inspire me to look at life from a new perspective. There's another reason for me to love you. Once we've had this first date to the fullest, I'll do what the game leads me to do and delete your character file. Even with Monica, I feel like I just couldn't delete her. I don't know, like, not only would I be alone, but... Technically speaking, I have some fault in this, in this whole charade. You know, I'm kind of jealous that everyone in this club had scenes outside of school too. That makes me the only one who hasn't gotten the dress in anything but our school uniform. It's kind of a shame. I would have to love. I would have loved to wear some cute clothes for you. Do you know any artists? I wonder if they. I wonder if anyone would ever want to draw me wearing something else. That would be amazing. If ever that happens, will you show me? You can share with me on Twitter, actually. My user. My username is Lumonix3. Huh? Well, I have Twitter, Monica. So, yeah. Alright, we can chit chat. Sure thing. <laughs> just try to keep it PG. Oh, not G, just PG. Okay. Have we got that far in a relationship? Uh -huh. I'm an artist, sorta. I, I'm a very amateurish artist, actually. I only do pixel art, and my drawings aren't really that good. I'm sorry. Um, I, I, I could probably draw you some things, but it's not gonna justify the amount of people out there who probably would have drawn some things heaps better than I could ever. But you know what? Stepping stones! Like you said, Monica, don't look to the professionals for, you know, for your standards. Just set your bar a little bit low so that you don't get demoralized and just keep building your way up. Thanks for giving that, me that motivation. I can't help but wonder how things would have been different if the game just gave me a route in the first place. I think I would have ended up forcing you onto my own route anyway. It has less to do with me not having a route, more to do with me knowing that nothing is real. 
I think the only difference would be that I may have not needed to take such drastic measures to be with you. Maybe the rest of the club would still be around. Not that it really matters. It's all lost its meaning once I found out it wasn't real. Oh, did I click on some... Ah, oops. So I really don't miss those days or anything. I really don't. So that's how you could murder them without remorse. You just think that they're not real. And in a sense, I guess so. But you kinda too. Maybe... I don't know. Still, I mean, technically since you're in the same universe as them, doesn't it hurt you a little bit to murder what remotely looks human? I don't know. You're, really, you're such a good listener, you know, I really love that about you. Huh? Sometimes I'm afraid that I'm rambling on and talking about boring things. It makes me kind of self-conscious when I'm having con when I'm having this conversation. But I don't feel that way with you. Like, I don't think anyone else could make me feel this way. You really are special. I don't want anyone to tell you otherwise. Thanks, Monica. Wish I could return some sort of compliment. I like your hair. It's very long. Nice ribbon around it too. White. Pure. The eyes? Green. Nice. I like green eyes. Green or blue? Hmm. Can't decide. Hey, have you ever heard of the term Yandere? It's a personality type that means someone is so obsessed with you that they'll do absolutely anything to be with you. Usually to the point of craziness. Monica, doesn't that sort of describe you? I don't know. Would you consider Monica Yan? Oh, okay. Well, in a sense, she sort of is, because she murdered others to be where she is now, with me. I don't know. It might even hurt you or your friends to get their way. But anyway, this game happens to be... It happens to have someone who can basically be described as Yandere. By now, it's pretty obvious who I'm talking about. And that would be... Yuri, yeah. But you... I don't know, you too, maybe? I don't know. She really she really got insanely possessive of you when she started to open up a little. She even told me I should kill myself. Monica, but that was sort of your influence, wasn't it? I couldn't believe she just said that. I just had to leave at that point. But thinking about it now, that was a little ironic. Haha. <laughs> anyway. A lot of people are actually into the yandere type, you know? I guess they really like the idea of someone being crazy obsessed with them. People are weird. I don't judge them though. Also, I might be a little obsessed with you, but I'm far from crazy. Yeah, that's the thing. Andres are usually mentally insane, but you are as calm as a stone. You're like half Yandere and half Dere Dere. Turn out to be the only normal game in this game. Uh, normal girl in this game. It's not like I could ever kill person. Just the thought of it makes me shiver. But come on, everyone's killed people in games before. Does that make you a psychopath? Of course not. But if you do happen to be the yonder, into the Yandere type, I can try acting a little more creepy for you. <laughs> then again, there's, there's already nowhere else for you to go or anything for me to get jealous over. Is this a Yandere girl's dream? I'd ask Yuri if I could. Call me creepy and crazy, but I actually... I can actually tolerate the Yandere type. It's one of the tropes that I'm sort of intrigued by. Not in a very fetish, fetishized sort of way. I don't know if I said that right, but... You know, Yandere's are... They can be cool sometimes. Cool personalities. Sometimes annoying, but they can be cool. I know there are times you won't always be able to be here with me. Like if you need to go out or take care of other things or go to the bathroom. <laughs> but I'll always have you in my thoughts, patiently waiting for you to come back. Come to think of it, if you copy my character file onto a flash drive or something, you can always keep a part of me with you. I guess it's kind of unorthodox, but I find it really romantic for some reason. Haha, <laughs> sorry for such a silly idea. I don't mean 
to be too needy or anything, but it's kind of hard when I'm so in love with you. Huh. What if I do save a version of Monica? Okay. Monica, I'm just going to copy your save file and put it, I don't know, desktop? Oh, what the... DDLC has stopped working. What? I didn't. I didn't do that. Uh it's fraps has stopped work. Uh, hold up. Did I break the game? I hope I didn't. Hello there. Uh, uh. Let me stop the recording. Cause my. Hang on. Whoa! Well, I'm almost there at the stop button. Just click yes. Okay, click. Sorry about that, guys. For some reason, the game crashed when I was trying to copy Monica's file into the uh, onto my desktop. I don't know if that was intentional, but it crashed my fraps for crying out loud. And I'm just worried that some of my files might be corrupted. Either way, it should be fine. If if there are, if there was some parts that got corrupted and were hence skipped over, I'll let you know in the editing. But anyways. Well, now, this is new dialogue, because... What just happened? Yeah, because I quit the... I quote-unquote quit the game, so... Let's see what happens. I just had an awful dream. I was hoping those would stop, now that it's just the two of us. I guess that was just wishful thinking. Ianara, I don't know if you have any idea. But... If you know what might be causing that, could you try to do something about it? Whenever it, ha whenever it happens, it almost feels like I'm being killed or something. It's a really horrible feeling. If you can figure out what's causing that, I'll love you forever. Sorry, it was just me trying to copy and save your file onto my desktop. I don't know, some, some sort of memento. Some sort of twisted memento. I haven't... Uh, wait, did I already go through this? Go to a cafe, go shopping together, and while shopping, just browse. Oh, okay, so we've already gone through this. Oh, don't tell me it reset just because I accidentally... I accidentally crashed. Alright, so any dialogue that I've already gone through, I'll just skip. Because you've already seen this. Oh, this is new. Do you ever feel like you waste too much time on the internet? Social media can practically be like a prison. It's like whenever you have a few seconds of spare time, you want to check on your favorite websites. And before you know it, hours have already gone by and you've gotten nothing out of it. Anyway, it's really easy to blame yourself for being lazy. But it's not really even your fault. Addiction isn't usually something you can just make disappear with your own willpower. You have to learn the techniques to avoid it and try different things. For example, there are apps that let you block websites for intervals of time. Or you can set a timer f to have a more concrete reminder of when it's time to work versus play. Or you can separate your work and play environments which helps your brain get into the right mode. Even if you make a new user account on your computer to use for work, that's enough to help. Putting any kind of wedge like that between you and your bad habits will help you stay away. Just remember not to blame yourself too hard if, you have, if you're having trouble. If it's really impacting your life, then you should take it seriously. I just want to see you be the best person you can be. Will you do, will you do something today to make me feel proud of you? I'm always rooting for you, Yanara. Ah, oh, thank you. That's just a shame where this is all leading in the end. Well, you know what? I can choose to delete you, or I can choose to keep you, or have two Monicas. Mm. After this is over, I'm gonna see what happens if I add another Monica. It's gonna be so hilarious if like another one pops in the background or something. Like considering how meta this game is, I will be shocked if there's like another Monica, but that pops up if I put another character file there, or if I oh uh, yeah, so you already said I already did this. Anyways. If I like put maybe, yeah, Yuri or Sayori's uh, thing into the character file, I wonder if they'll pop up in the background and be like, Hey, I know what you did. We hate you, etc, etc. If this game does that, oh my gosh. 
I'll have to play through it again. So, uh, uh, really? Is it because I accidentally crashed the game? The dialogue is resetting? Well, alright. I'll see you on the other side when I reach new dialogue. Can you tell me about the stars in the background, actually? It's suddenly nighttime. Was that your doing? Do you like the stars? I like them too. It's very the pretty to look at. Do you believe in God? I was never too sure myself. Well, I'm sure I never really questioned it as a kid. But as I grew up, the more I learned about the world, the more I would question it. I started to wonder why God was helping people pass exams or get over a cold. When there are children who live their lives being sold as sex slaves. Or the 800 million people who are too poor to even eat. I wonder how many of those people pray to God every day until they starve and die. Or how many millions of families pray for a loved one to recover from some incurable disease. But the punchline is this. If just one person beats the odds and survives among the thousands of others who die, then it's suddenly a miracle from God. I'd really love to meet this God who seemingly laughs at the misery of everyone not eligible for his miracles. But the irony is that I do have a creator apparently. And you know what? I bet he's still laughing at the miserable fates of Sayori, Yuri, and Yuri even as we speak. And Natsuki, don't forget, you deleted her. What are we to him but props in a scripted play? So from that perspective, I don't think it's too far-fetched from there to be a god if Earth was nothing but his playset. As for the creator of this game, you have put me through a lot of misery. Yeah, put a lot of people through a lot of misery because there are people playing this game. And Monica is stuck here in your little, as she calls it, playset. You know, I really do think. Oh, yep. Okay, hang on. This is already dialogue I went through. Ah, new dialogue. Here we go. I think the most important skill in life is being able to fake confidence. I'm pretty convinced that everyone feels at least a little bit scared and alone. But being able to trick others into thinking you have it all together. That's a key part of getting people to respect and admire you. I think I've gotten pretty good at that over the years. I don't show my weaknesses very often. But because of that, I haven't had many people I could really open up to. I mean, when you do reach the point in a friendship where you can start expressing your vulnerabilities... Anyway, that's one reason why I'm so glad I have you now. I feel like I'm a little bit less scared and alone when you're here with me. You feel the same way? I want. I really want to be that person for you. Uh, actually, this is this is a thing. Why is there sun coming out of these windows when it's already dark? Okay, well, fine. I guess it's those flary things, but it should be completely dark right now. Or just a little bit of light. I don't know. This universe is weird. Do you like this place, Monica? I sort of like it. The stars are nice. There's one thing for me, I like them particles. If I was really morbid, I could exact revenge on you killing those three or two girls by continuously quitting the game and entering again. Would you break up with me if I did that? I'm purposely trying to hurt you if I did. You know what? As I keep saying, I'm gonna see all these dialogues through and if it reaches a certain point where I'm confident that there's no more dialogue left, then we'll, we'll see from there. Anyways, on to the next one. You know, I, I kind of feel bad because what am I literally doing but sitting here and extracting all possible information and dialogue from her? Oh, what's this? Okay, everyone. It's time to... I'm just kidding. I used to really like saying that for some reason. <laughs> I couldn't help but say it again. Come to think of it, didn't Natsuki and Yuri make fun of me for it once? Well, whatever. They're dead now! <laughs> You're too much of a sweetheart to do that, aren't you? There's nothing I can really make fun of you of! Like, oh, you have long hair! Uh, long hair gets dirty easily. I can't really insult you. You're like the almost perfect, almost. You not being able to make a route for yourself is kind of a flaw, but... 
it's more of a restriction than it is of law. Anyways, I kind of feel bad because I'm literally just sitting here extracting information and then at the very end, I'm just going to pull the plug. Is that it? Am I just going to be like, okay, you've said everything. Uh, I'm deleting your game file now. Really? I kind of feel like a jerk in that sense. Like, okay, I mean, the game is for... What's... Oh, favorite color. Okay, anyways, as I was saying, um, I kind of feel like a jerk in that sense because... You know, if this were real life, if, like, this is me and my whole emotional connection thing again, but if this were real life, you know, it'd be the equivalent of going on a date with someone, giving them a really good time, and then straight up shooting them in the head, you know? Am I, am I, am I being too emotional over a fictional character? Is this even fiction anymore? I think it's real. Ugh. The lines between reality and fantasy for me can easily be blurred. Um, yeah, because I'm a very fan, fan, I don't know, fantastical guy. I love my fantasies. They take me to places, and I can imagine that they're real even for a second. It's so much fun, but at the same time, it can be scary. Because there was once a time where I convinced myself that my fantasy was real, and anyone who didn't believe so were maniacs. Uh, yeah, I've seen this again. What a time I was. I was a kid and I was like, oh, this person is real. She's not an imaginary friend. And she technically was. And anyone who said otherwise were just maniacs. Wah. You know what? I like to entertain myself with the idea that this is real how's that yeah it's like a window to another dimension you know what pretending is fun okay i'm not like those people say oh it's just a game boo hoo i'm just gonna end it right here no i like to pretend that things can be real sometimes it gets me within the moment it helps me emotionally connect it's just so much fun so where did advice for you out there if you get made fun of just because you imagine a little too much Maybe don't imagine to the point of delusion, right? But come on, it's your imagination, your world. Embrace it for a little bit, it's fun. Well, as long as you know how to snap back into reality, that is. Anyways, where was I? Oh yes, realities, fantasies. Hmm. Actually, you know what? Now would be the good time to look at my YouTube comments. Mm -hmm. Ah, no, sorry, okay, I'll put my phone down. All right, we are on a date. I should not have my phone out. Sometimes I think back to middle school. So embarrassed by the way I used to behave back then. It almost hurts to think about. I wonder if I'm in college. I wonder if when I'm in college, I'll feel about that way about high school. I like the way I am now, so it's pretty hard for me to imagine that happening. I don't think you'll ever go to college. We are stuck here as high school students. Well, I'm technically a uni student, but. Mm. That's really easy to do when you with you here. <laughs> In any case, I love to reminisce, but sometimes I run into those really cringy spots called embarrassing moments. So there was one time in class where I didn't know what a certain body part was, so I blurted out the word and everyone just gave me a shocked word. Uh, a shocked expression. You could probably imagine what that word was, but I'm not gonna say it because it's just too unbearable. Haha, <laughs> ignorant! Another embarrassing moment where. Hmm, I made a whole video. Not, mo not even a video. I made a whole movie just to roast someone. That was pretty embarrassing. I made it on Sims 3. Oh, it's Sunday, eh? Oh, there we go. It's someone who tries to hide their feelings by being mean and fussy or trying to act tough. I'm sure it's obvious, but Natsuki was really the embodiment of that. <laughs> At first I thought she was just like that because it's supposed to be cute or something. But once I started to learn a little more about her personal life, it made a little more sense. It seems like she's always trying to keep up with her friends. You know how some friend groups in high school just make a habit of picking on each other all the time? I think it's really gotten to her. So she has this really defensive attitude all the time. And I'm not even going to talk about her home situation. Oh, with her abusive dad? Oh uh, yeah, I caught on with that too. But looking black, I'm glad I was able to provide a club as a comfortable place for her. 
Not to mention, not that it matters anymore, considering she doesn't even exist. Why do you say her name then? Oh, you're just reminiscing? Okay. Let me reminisce in more embarrassing moments. Yeah, so I made this, uh, this whole movie just to roast someone. Oh my gosh. In Sims 3, I'd electrocute them, set them on fire, have them hit by meteorites, and then they would drown being met by the Grim Reaper. And I would set their graves on fire. I don't know. Either way, I was pretty... Pretty sadistic back then in terms of my imagination. I would want someone to die, so I'd make them die in the most excruciating way possible in my imagination. Knowing that it's not real, therefore I took comfort if I thought of anything very cruel. Anyways, I will go... Uh, okay, I'll go skip ahead. Is this new dialogue? I hate how hard it is to form habits. There's so much stuff where actually doing it isn't hard, but forming the habit seems impossible. It just makes you feel so useless, like you can't do anything right. I think the new generation suffers from it the most. Probably because we have a totally different set of skills than those who came before us. Thanks to the internet, we're really good at sifting through tons of information really quickly. But we're bad at doing things that don't give us instant gratification. I think if science, psychology, and education don't catch up in the next 10 or 20 years, then we're really in trouble. But for the time being, if you're not one of those people who can conquer the problem, you might just have to live with feeling awful about it yourself. Good luck, I guess. Not the most uh, motivating speech you've given, Monica, but uh, you've, given, you've given some pretty inspirational and motivating speeches. You know, <sighs> chilling in the void, giving philosophical phrases, dialogue. In any case, Monica, you know what? This has been a pretty good date. I just feel bad for what I'm about to do later on. Like, delete your file? Come on. But this game wants me to do it. Or at least it's leading me to anyway, so... I wonder if I'm able to change the music. Sometimes a little more... Something a little more romantic would be nice, you know? Like a gentle piano. Okay, let me do that. Ah, uh, music volume. There we go. Now, let me pop something up. Damn! Oh yes, perfect, perfect atmosphere. Mm. Let's see. Maybe if I. Oh wait, hang on. Are you gonna present something? Oh jeez, that wasn't it at all. Sorry, I don't really know what I'm doing. I guess I shouldn't be messing with things like that. I already broke so much stuff, and deleted the other characters. Ah. I'm not sad about it or anything. Of course you wouldn't, because they're not real! It's not right for me to miss things that weren't even real in the first place. You, you read my mind, my gosh. Or am I a step ahead of you? <laughs> if I just focus on the present, then this is the happiest I've ever been. See, I don't... I feel sort of guilty taking this away from her. And if I think like Monica, right? They aren't real. But so isn't she. So nothing is real. This is just a game. So why should I feel bad, huh? <sighs> ah, this game is making me feel complex feelings. Ah, I'm like the Grinch. I'm feeling again. Ah. In any case, let me. Would you like? Oh uh, yeah, introduce your friends. You know what? Okay, you want some romantic music? I'll give you some romantic music. There we go. There we go. And now I'm just listening to nothing. Well, it's nothing to me, but in the editing, there'll be music. You know what? I can't take this anymore. Alright, bring back the old uh, soothing music. That's better. There we go. Soothing. Void. Mm. As for my favorite, uh, as for my favorite food, me, not Ionaro, I like soup. Anything broth or sauce like I like it. Uh, I also like steak. Love steak. Fish. I love fish too. 
Okay, maybe not like romantic love. I meant like love to eat. Come on. Can't help but feel a little sad sometimes. Knowing that this is the closest I can ever get to you. There's nothing more I want than to be in the same room as you for real. And to feel your warmth. And to hear the sound of your heartbeat. You know, you're getting a bit too... too uh, what's the word? Intimate? Close. There we go. For my liking. Come on! It's our first date! Just take it easy. So, I got nothing. I think I've exhausted all, all, all my personal dialogue. I could talk about uh, Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle. That'd be pretty fun. Um, good game. Sucks that it's somewhat autopilot. That means newbies can kick my butt any time of the day. I hate that, man. I'm going on online and these people who are blue and dark green, they're beating me. Far out. Where were the good old days in Chrono Phantasma and Central Fiction where I'd just be a, a veteran, a yellow, or an orange? No more of that. Ah, uh, yeah, writing tip of the day. I used to be such a veteran in Blaze Blue, then comes long cross tag battle, and I'm. I'm a noob again. Ugh. And all these characters who have like broken attacks, like Gordo's normals and Grim Reaper! People out there are probably wondering what I'm talking about, and I'm sorry, but this is what happens when I'm cooped up on my own with another person in front of me. <laughs> ah, new dialogue. I was thinking about Sayori earlier. I still wish I could have handled that whole thing a little more tactfully. You're still not hung over, hung up over it, right? Ah, I see what you did there. Stop it. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I just said that. That pun was completely unintentional, I swear. Of course it was. Come on. That was a tasteful. I know how much you cared about her, so it only feels right for me to share her last moments with you. You know, Sayori is really clumsy. Well, she kind of messed up the whole hanging thing. You're supposed to jump from high enough that the rope snaps your neck, making it quick and painless. But she just used the chair, meaning, meaning she kind of just let herself to slowly... Oh, how do you say that word? But a few seconds in, she must have changed her mind or something. Because she started clawing at the rope trying to free herself. She must have kept it at it all the way until she lost consciousness. That's why her fingertips were all bloody anyway. Come to think of it, it was probably less changing her mind and more just her survival instincts kicking in. So you can't really fault her for that. It's easier to think that she probably wouldn't have changed her mind anyway, right? It's not healthy to think about the things you could have done differently. So just remember that even though you could have saved her, it's technically not your fault she killed herself. I may have exasperated it a little bit, but Sayori was already mentally ill. Still though, I wonder how things would have been if you and I just started dating from the get-go. I guess we'd all still be in the club room, writing poems and having fun together. I don't know, it's a little bit selfish though, Monica. I mean, I don't know. I don't know anymore. It's the same ending either way, right? Two of us happily together. There's no reason to ask for anything more than that. I was just pointlessly amusing. I'm really as happy as I could be right now. Ha! Ah, you just... Why do you go into Sayori's death into more detail? Uh, I didn't need to be reminded about that, thanks. What, are you going to tell me about Yuri's last final moments? Well, I did witness that beforehand. Oh, Natsuki, she's like the only person that wasn't physically harmed that she was quote-unquote killed. Oh, in any case, uh, yeah. Alright. So, just chilling in the void. You know, I had to say, but I kind of think my biggest regret is that we couldn't finish- Ah, oh, yeah, event at the festival. Sorry, Monica, I know I soundboard. There's only so much sitting on a chair and staring into deep space and your eyes, I guess. Could really, like, so much fun I could really get from that. I'll tell you what. After this whole thing, we'll play a game. Yeah? Just, you know, liven up this day. This is a bit, you know... What's the word? 
not boring, but uneventful. There we go. I'm trying not to hurt your feelings. I'm trying to be good because soon I probably won't be, and you're probably gonna hate me for it. I already know I gotta delete your file, but it's a matter of when. When am I emotionally prepared to do so? So for now, I'm just gonna sit here, listen to you, and think about the next game we're gonna play. Is this is this new dialogue? Ah, yeah it is. What is it about these character archetypes that people find so appealing anyway? Their personalities are just completely unrealistic. Like, imagine if there was someone like Yuri in real life. I mean, she barely, she's barely even capable of forming a complete sentence. And forget about Natsuki. Sheesh. Someone with her kind of personality just doesn't get all cute and pouty whenever things don't go her way. I could go on, but I think you get the point. Are people really attracted to these weird personalities that literally don't exist in real life? I'm not judging or anything. After all, I found myself attracted to some pretty weird stuff too. I'm just saying, it fascinates me. It's like you're siphoning out of out all the components of a character that make them feel human and leaving just the cute stuff. It's concentrated cuteness with no actual substance. You wouldn't like me more if I was like that, right? Maybe I just feel a little insecure because you're playing this game in the first place. Then again, you're still here with me, aren't you? I think that's enough reason for me to believe that I'm okay just the way I am. And by the way, you are too, Hiyanaro. You're the perfect combination of human and cuteness. Nah, thank you. <laughs> that's why there's never a chance I wouldn't fall for you. I really like the sound of rain. Not so much getting my clothes and hair wet though, but a nice quiet day at home with the sound of rainfall outside my window. I like rain too! Hey! Another interest we share! Far out, this is freaking me out. Sometimes I imagine you holding me while we listen to the sound of the rain outside. That's weird. I like hot weather and I like rain, which don't really they don't usually happen at the same time unless you're in an you know, at near the equator in tropical countries, then rain away at the hu most humid and hot weather ever. Ugh, I hate that. Humid, I don't like. Like, I like dry hot, but not wet hot. Like, sticks onto your skin, and I, apparently you get more, like, blisters or pimples that way, because, you know, it covers your skin. Yuck. How are you able to keep your posture like that all the time? I gotta move around every so often, but you, you just sit like this. Anyways, new dialogue. Hey, you remember the last poem I showed you? I mean, the one right before Yuri killed herself with all the messed up colors and stuff. That was actually a little more of an experiment than a poem, you could say. I was experimenting with different ways I could modify the game and run code and things like that. It almost seemed like with enough effort I would be able to escape from the confines of the game entirely. Sadly, I didn't really know what I was doing, so I messed up the whole thing. And then I'd keep trying, but I doubt you'd want to deal with me doing that. Besides, that was when I was getting really desperate, you know? I don't really feel that way anymore. I'm happy where we are right now. And I can tell you are too. Am I? I feel unresolved, honestly, Monica. Unresolved. We could sit like this forever, but I need to see things to the very end. I can't stop here. I'm sorry. Hey, you know that book you were reading with Yuri? Portrait of whatever it's called. <laughs> it's funny because I'm pretty sure that book... Ha. Huh. Actually, I don't think I should be talking to you about this. <laughs> sorry. Just forget I said anything. Oh, come on! You let me in and you just gonna stop right there? What? What was that book about? The Portrait of Markov? I gotta look that up, but I'm so scared that as soon as I click on anything else, this game will like crash and I'll have to restart all the dialogue all over again. Actually, I don't know if this game keeps track of dialogue. I think it just continuously repeats some. It like pulls a dialogue out of a hat. Either way, I'm gonna stick around. Sorry if you guys get bored.
Ah, yes, Yandere. Sorry if you guys get bored by all of this, but I want to make this a full playthrough. Hmm. Huh. Now that I mention it, if I were to make this a full playthrough, I'd have to do the other routes prior to Sayori's death again. I mean... Monog... Uh, not Monogus. There is no route for you! Why not?! Whatever. Um, which is Yuri's route and... Mm, I guess Natsuki's route? Prior to Sayori's death? I don't know. Either way... If you guys want, or are you just waiting for episode 6 like everyone else is? I'm sorry guys, I just, I just, I need a lot of time, episode 6 isn't coming along in a long time, okay? Oh my gosh, this is new, I tried skipping the dialogue, and this pops up, this is interesting, alright, are you trying to fast forward? I'm not boring you, am I? Oh gosh, well, there's nothing to fast forward to, Ianaro, it's just the two of us after all. Aside from that, time doesn't really exist anymore, so it's not even going to work. Here, I'll go ahead and turn it off for you. There we go. You'll be a sweetheart and listen from now on, right? Thanks. Now, where was I? Ah. Ah. Okay, the... You know, it kind of... Ah, oh, creative time. Yeah, alright. <sighs> Shame! I thought... You know what? You know what? You're right, Monica. I was a bit rude there, okay? So, yeah, alright, I won't skip anymore. I wonder what happens if I try doing that again. Oh wait, no, it doesn't work anymore. <laughs> okay. Well, fine, I, I was a bit rude. You're right, okay, I'll stop there. You guys have it easy. I get to skip for you if you ever get bored. I have to sit through dialogue I've already seen because I accidentally crashed the game! Wonder what other wacky things I can do that she can be aware of. Hang on, I'll wait for the thing to pop up again. You know, high school is a really turbulent time in a lot of people's lives. Uh, hang on. Settings, tech speed. Okay, yeah. Save. There's no point in saving anymore. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere. Uh huh. Okay, main menu. Stop it! Help. The help file has been opened in your browser. Oh! Oh, okay. What is this? Ah, uh, just basic help. Okay, never mind. I didn't want to know that. And quit. Ah, I know what that does. I'm not going to do it. Anyways, have I seen this before? People can get really passionate and dramatic. And others have aching hearts and seek attention on social media. But all of the social pressure and hormones can lead to a dark time in people's lives. Everyone has a story. You may not know what someone is really feeling on the inside. Many people who are depressed don't even bother telling the world about it. They just don't want attention because they're already given up on the inside. Their feeling of worthlessness is so overwhelming that they don't even want people to tell them otherwise. Depression comes in many forms, but that is one of them. Just, if you think you know someone struggling with depression, you can help by just treating them like they're a good friend. Spending time with them even if they don't like doing much. And remind them that they always have something to look forward to. Making plans in advance, letting them borrow something, or even just saying, see you at school tomorrow. All those things can help your friend make it to the next day. I hope being friends with Sayori has given you some perspective on the true face of depression. Yeah, she's gone now. But Sayuru was never real in the first place. Here you are, remind me. You're real. Your friends are real. And just by being a good person, you can save someone's life. As for you... You don't have to struggle with depression or anything like that. You don't just struggle with depression or anything like that, do you? Because you, too, have people who want to save your life. Maybe they don't express it every day. Or maybe they don't even know how to. But people do feel that way. I promise. Man, humans are complicated. But as long as you're here with me, I'll take care of you, love. Thank you. Not that I'm depressed or anything, but I am... I don't know what I am. I am. 
Uh, okay. Well, this has been a pretty eventful and long date. It's been over 50 minutes, I would have guessed. This part's gonna be very long, guys. Probably the longest. The absolute longest! Like, maybe an hour and 30 minutes sort of long. That's how long we're talking here. How many times have I said long? Back in my debate club days, I learned a whole lot about arguing. The problem with arguing is that each person sees their opinion as the superior one. That's kind of stating the obvious, but it affects the way they tried to get their point across. Let's say you really like a certain movie, right? If someone comes along and tells you the movie sucks because it did X and Y wrong, does that make you feel kind of personally attacked? It's because by saying that, it's like they're implying that you have bad taste. And once emotions enter the picture, it's almost guaranteed that both people will be left sour. But it's all about language. If you make everything as subjective sounding as possible, then people listen to you without feeling attacked. You could say, I'm personally not a fan of it, and I felt like I... I'd like it more if it did X and Y, things like that. It even works if you're citing facts about things. If you say, I read on this website that it works like this, or if you admit that you're not an expert on it, it's much more like you're putting your knowledge on the table rather than forcing it onto them. If you put it in an active effort to keep the discussion mutual and level, it will usually follow suit. Unless you're an internet troll, then they're just there after your emotions. Plus, people will start seeing you as open-minded and a good listener. It's a win-win, you know? Well, I guess that would be Monica's debate tip of the day. <laughs> that sounds a little silly. Thanks for listening, though. You're welcome. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to sound bored. I just, you know... I don't know. I don't know how good people can sit down at a desk and record for 50 minutes. I, I get angsty. Don't you get angsty from sitting like this? Don't you get pins and needles? You know, I always hated how hard it is to make friends. Well, I guess not the making friends part, but more like meeting new people. I mean, there are like dating apps and stuff, right? Like Tinder. <laughs> but that's not the kind of thing I'm talking about. If you think about it, most of the friends you make are people you just met by chance. Like you had a class together, or you met them through another friend. Or maybe they were just wearing a shirt with your favorite band on it and you decided to talk to them. Things like that. But isn't that kind of inefficient? It feels like you're just picking at complete random if you get lucky you make a new friend. And comparing that to the hundreds of strangers we walk by every single day? You could be sitting right next to someone co compatible enough to be your best friend for life. But you'll never know. Once you get up and go on with your day, that opportunity is gone forever. Isn't that just kind of depressing? We live in an age where technology connects us to the world no matter where we are. I really think we should take advantage of that to improve our everyday social life. But who knows how long it'll take for someone like that to successfully take off. I seriously thought it would happen by now. Well, at least I already met the best person in the world. Not me. Definitely not me. You know, it's funny because even though I thought I've always had a lot of drive, there's something kind of enticing about being the stay-at-home partner. I guess I'm like perpetuating gender roles or whatever by saying that but being able to keep the house clean and shop and decorate and things like that and having a nice dinner for you when you come home is that a weird fantasy i mean i'm not sure if i could actually see myself doing that i wouldn't really be able to put put that over striving for a fulfilling career it's kind of cute to think about though I wonder if there is any point in this game where it cuts off and Monica says, Oh, thanks for listening to me. Now we're just going to stare at each other for eternity. And that's my signal to do what the game wants me to do and delete her. Uh, 
Then I will be stuck here for eternity. Alone! And depressed. Mm. But we can muse on about favorite video games. Caesar? Oh wow, that's a title I've never... <laughs> haven't really touched upon in a while. Caesar. Age of Empires. <sighs> Love that game. Favorite. Sims 4. I don't like how Sims 4 is not open world anymore. I loved Sims 3 for that, but Sims 4... It's like Sims 2 again. Which, okay. I'm still waiting on them expansion packs. There's an expa There's an expansion pack for an expansion pack. Are you serious? Anyways. Ianaro, did you get good sleep? It can it can be really hard to get enough sleep nowadays. After what you did? Oh! The sleepless nights, Monica. Especially nice when you're forced to wake up so early every day. I'm sure college is a little bit better since you probably have a more flexible schedule. Then again, I hear a lot of people in college stay up all night away for no real reason. Is that true? Anyway, I saw some studies that talked about the horrible short-term and long-term effects caused by lack of sleep. It seems like mental functions, health, and even lifespan can be dramatically impacted by it. I just think you're really great and wanted to make sure you're not accidentally destroying yourself. Too late, Monica. I've been sleeping at 3 a.m. and waking up at 11. Technically speaking, that counts for what? Eight hours of sleep? But it's pretty late, so... It might be detrimental to my health. But don't worry. I sleep eight hours a day. Or, yeah, eight hours a night. Don't you worry. Now, are you getting enough sleep? Because you seem like the kind of person that doesn't sleep at all. You just seem awake all the time. Unless, of course, I quit the game. Then you sleep for as long as the game is closed. By the way, I just noticed this little, little parchment of your shirt. It lights up every now and then. This is just some kind of tacky romance game, right? I kind of have to ask. What made you consider even playing this in the first place? Okay. Backstory. Friend recommended it to me. And now I'm playing it. He just wanted to see my reaction to certain parts. Are you happy now? Ugh. So blame my friend, really. I got to meet you. You're not, you're not lonely anymore. Actually, does history work? Yeah, it does. I can't help but feel like this was fate. Don't you feel that way too? <laughs> yeah, fate. Fate by my friend. Thank you. And now I have every right to punch him in the face when I see him again. But you know what, Monica? I got to meet you. So you know what? I'm going to pull back that punch. I'm going to only slap him in the face. Unless you want me to full-on blow his eyes out, I'll do that too. Oh great, I'm thinking like, uh, thinking like a crazy person. This is what happens when you sit in the void. How long have we been here? What day is this? You know what's kind of creepy? Even though I deleted everyone else's files, I can still kind of feel them. It's like all their lines are still lingering in the air, whispering in the back of my head. Imagine if, after someone you knew died, you just started hearing their voice in your head. Maybe I just wasn't thorough enough. But I'm too afraid to delete anything else because I might really break things. Like, if I mess with any other files relevant to me, I might actually accidentally delete myself. And that would ruin everything, wouldn't it? I don't know what it's like on your end, but we should both make sure to avoid something like that at all costs. I believe in you, Ianaro. You have a lot of trust in me, despite the fact that I hold your very will in this one folder. Have you stopped saying anything? You've been silent for a while. Did you know I'm on Twitter? You mentioned that, didn't you? I guess someone was kind enough to make an account for me. I picked the username, though. I love sharing my thoughts and chattering with the world. The real world. So make sure you follow me, okay? It really mean a lot to me. How much you mean to me and all. It really made me feel loved. Oh, you want me to follow you on Twitter? Okay. I'll do this after, though, because I don't want to crash the game again and go through the same dialogue. Ugh. Not the 
that you're boring or anything, Monica. Totally not. I'm just... I just have a very short attention span, and I just want to hasten things up a little bit, you know? Besides, our date is lasting for like, what, an hour? An hour and 30 minutes? And I haven't even gotten to the dessert. What kind of dessert do you like? Chocolates? Cakes? Pastries? Do you like horror? See, I like a horror game every now and then. I remember we talked about it a little bit when you first joined the club. I can enjoy horror novels, but not really horror movies. The problem I have with horror movies is that most of them are just... Most of them just rely on easy tactics. I agree with you. Like dark lighting and scary looking monsters and jump scares and things like that. It's not fun or inspiring to get scared by stuff that just takes advantage of human instinct. Like... <laughs> but with novels, it's a little different. The story and writing needs to be descriptive enough to put a genuinely disturbing thought into the reader's head. It really needs to etch them deeply into the story and characters and just mess with your mind. In my opinion, there's nothing more creepy than things just being slightly off. Like if you set up a bunch of expectations what the story is going to be about, and then you just start inverting things and pulling the pieces apart. Like this game, <laughs> cheeky. So even though the story doesn't feel like it's trying to be scary, the reader feels really deeply unsettled. Like they know that something horribly wrong is hiding beneath the cracks just waiting to surface. God, just thinking about it gives me the chills. It's the kind of horror I really appreciate. I like that horror too. In fact, this game had some horror aspects to it that I really liked. Subtle, no jump sc well, a few jump scares, but, you know, subtle, I like meta horror too. Ah, I actually adore meta, meta horror. It feels like you're really there, interacting with the game itself. In any case, I can tolerate any uh, sort of horror. Playing horror games though? <laughs> I'm kind of kind of unnerved, but I will not completely dismiss the idea. I can do it. Anyways, let me just check my recording time. I'm not gonna even. I'm not gonna stop even if it's like, you know, almost overtime. Actually, it's way beyond overtime. I should stop now, but I want to keep going to see if there's any else, any other dialogue. Do you ever just feel like there's no real reason for you to be alive? I don't mean it in, like, a suicidal way. I just mean how nothing that we do is special. Just being in school or working at some job for some company. It's like you're completely replaceable and the world wouldn't miss you if you were gone. It makes me really want to go and change the world after I graduate. But the older I get, the more I realize that it's an immature frame of thinking. It's not like I can just go and change the world. Like, what are the chances that I'll be the one to invent artificial intelligence or become president? It feels like I'm never going to make up for the heaps of resources I spend up, I spent living in my life. That's why I think the key to happiness is just to be hopelessly selfish. Just to look out for oneself and those who happen to be their friends only because they grew up with them. Never mind the fact that they are spending their entire life taking and consuming and never giving back. But when people realize the world would benefit more from them killing themselves, they change their whole philosophy. It's like they have to justify their reason to live by tricking themselves into thinking they're doing good. Anyway, I want to live my life desperately striving to pay back my lifetime's worth of consumption. If I ever pass that point, then I'm a net positive and I can die happy. Of course, even if I do fail to do that, I think I'd be too selfish to kill myself anyway. So much for being a good person, right? Ha ha ha. Hey. I don't know what to expect from you when you say these things. Ah, well. Right, let's keep it up, Monica. I got all day. Or night. Or, like, time doesn't run, so I just got all. <laughs> all of the time. 
Alrighty. Hmm. You know what? It's a neat form of literature. Rap! Oh, wow, that came out of nowhere. I actually used to hate rap music. Maybe just because it was popular or I would only hear the junk they play in the radio. But some of my friends got more into it and they helped me keep an open mind. Rap might even be more challenging than poetry in some ways. Since you need to fit your lines to rhythm and there's so much more emphasis on wordplay. When people can put all that together and still deliver a powerful message, it's really amazing. I kinda wish I had a rapper in the literature club. Hey, I could be a rapper. Ian Naro the rapper. Just give me some sandwiches to wrap them in. <laughs> uh, sorry if it sounds silly, but it'd really be interesting to see what they came up with. It would really be a learning experience. Uh, the more and more I sit through this and sifting through the dialogue, the more I'm thinking that I'm actually just going through the same stuff over and over again. I think there's no end. This literally just keeps going on. I mean, it'd be impossible for the developer to keep on making more and more and more dialogue sets because, come on, this game isn't infinite. But, hmm, I wonder if there's any end, really. Natana starts to think about college. I, yeah, see? I think it's repeating the same stuff. Hmm. I'm gonna keep going and see if it like keeps repeating or maybe it's just my deja vu kicking in like I did do <laughs> pretty much a second run on this because I accidentally crashed my game but you know what I'm gonna sit here keep on going admire the stars outside and you're still sitting like this for I uh, no no changes you know I'm interested Monica what was your childhood like if you ever were programmed with one. Because you obviously talk about your debating class and things prior and some of your high school moments. It was like to die. Yeah, see? I feel like I've gone through this. Anyways, yeah. So, primary school. My primary school was pretty fun. Barely any homework. Barely any care in the world. I, I even joined a sports team without knowing the responsibilities behind being a sports captain and our team won <laughs> with me sort of in charge. That was, uh, that was something. This, this whole segment right here is sort of like an excuse to talk about my life experiences and I guess yours in some sense. Uh, you, uh, treat it as a podcast if you will guys. If you are getting immensely bored. I don't know, do something while you're at it, or if you want, skip right ahead. I'll tell you what, if I run into a piece of dialogue the third time, I am uh, definitely gonna say, okay, I think I think we've reached the end. Surely there should be some dialogue, at, like at the very, very end of this string of randomized dialogue, right? Or does it just keep going, and by sheer chance, I just happen to stumble upon different ones? Actually, do you know what I feel like doing right now? I want to experiment with the game's files, but more than that, I want to see what happens if I repeatedly close the game and uh, open it again. I want to see what happens. But let's, let's give it one more shot with the dialogue, if there's going to be anything else. If not, I'll close it and then reopen it. And maybe there will be a new dialogue. <laughs> Other th and then after that, I'll make another Monica file. <laughs> see what happens when there's two Monica's after a long day she do nothing yeah see okay well I'm gonna close the game now and I'll be right back you're back I had another really bad dream you're not the one doing that to me are you well yeah sorry about that I, I'm just experimenting the gee this feels weird it's like I'm obviously doing it on purpose <laughs> so if you could try to avoid doing that, I would be really grateful. Don't worry, I don't think it caused me any harm aside from mental scarring. Ah, just nothing other than mental scarring, that's all. <laughs> I'll be fine as long as my character file stays intact. Mm, I clicked at the game freeze. Ah, uh, oh, zero frames, what's going on? Oh, now where was I? Sorry for that frame drop. 
This feels weird. Uh, well, it's like, I usually just want to sit around the couch and do nothing. See? See? Okay. Um. So, yeah, I'm gonna close out again and re-enter. Sorry, Monica. This might hurt again. I see you quit the game on me again. I know I asked already, but can you seriously please try not to do that so much? Oh, man. It feels like I'm trapped in hell. Why would you want to do that to me? There's nothing wrong with my character file, right? Maybe you should make a backup of it or something. I'm pretty sure you can find it in the folder called... Ah, yes. Okay. So if I keep doing this, will she get angrier and angrier? To the point where she just doesn't want to talk to me anymore. I want to see. Just stay here with me from now on, okay? I still have a lot of things to talk about. Now, where was I? You were gonna talk about... You just want to sit on the couch all day. After a long day, I usually just want to sit around and do nothing. Okay. Alrighty. She just opens up with the word okay. I think she is slowly starting to have enough. I'm just gonna accept the fact that you need to quit the game once in a while. I'm starting to get used to it anyway. Besides, it makes me happy that you always come back. So I guess it's not so bad. Really? What about the weird dreams you have when I'm gone? <sighs> now where was I? You were gonna talk about... The pajamas. Okay, I'm gonna just do it one more time, alright? Hi again, Ianaro. I missed you. Are you making sure my character file is okay for me? It's in... Yep. Well, you're playing on Steam, so you can just go into the game properties and find the Browse Local Files button. I'm all that's left here, so I just want to make sure you don't run the risk of losing me. Anyways, I have a lot to talk about. Let's continue our conversation now, okay? Now, where was I? Okay, so this is what I'm gonna do. I am... Uh, hopefully this isn't crashing me again. Alright, what I'm gonna attempt to do is make another Monica file, alright? Obviously it's gonna be named something different, otherwise I'm like replacing hers with this other Monica's. Let's try, let's see, let's see if this game takes it to that level. Alright, uh, copy but keep both files, Monica number two. Yay, I have two Monica's. No, doesn't change anything. Hmm, okay. Well, I didn't expect it to be that meta, but it'd be pretty awesome if it did. Uh, how about after this dialogue? Hmm. Or what if I quit the game and come back to see your reaction? Or what if I put Sayori, Yuri, and Natsuki back in here? But I don't have their game files. I should have. Alright, same dialogue. Seems making sure my character file is okay for you. Yes, I was. Your character file has. Now you have. There's two Monicas. Hmm. Hope you're happy that you have two of yourselves. Everything's Monica now. It's just Monica. <gasps> Alrighty, Monica. I feel like I've run this date to the fullest. I've listened to what you've had to say. The only thing really now is. I don't know. I guess we could play a game together. Alrighty, let's see. Oh, you chose Ragna as well? I see you're a woman of culture. Well, despite who you've chosen, I'm still gonna be the better Ragna, for I've played him for years! Ever since Calamity Trigger. Uh, and you just had to pick unlimited mode. Far out! Why can't we have fun normally? Why you gotta cheat? Oh, nice low. Alright, can you put me down, please? Ah, oh, not like that! <sighs> Would you see all that hard work gone? No biggie. Ah, oh, no! No! Ah! Let's play something else. I think we should just stick to checkers. Man, I hate checkers. <laughs> Alright, Monica. I've listened to what you've had to say. And I understand that, I understand the frustration you uphold in this 
prison of a game where there is practically only one line of choice. And alas, I have been forced to make the decision to either keep you here or resume with the game and completely delete your file. Who knows, I might even break the game trying to do so, or I might not even do anything. Well, regardless, I just gotta keep pushing on, you know? It's been fun! Not the murdering and all that, but I guess all the philosophical quotes that you've given. It's been fun. Good talking to you at least, you know? And with that, let's see what happens when I delete her file. And delete. Uh, yeah. Oh dear. Okay, nothing's happening. Ah! 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 What's happening? Yinara, what's happening to me? It hurt. Oh, she's really gone. It hurts so much. Help me, Yinara. Now she's gone, and so is the whole room. Oh. Wow. Monica character does not exist. Really? No, it's right here. Or... Okay! Hey! Far out. Did you do this to me, Ianaro? Did you? Did you delete me? How could you? How could you do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much, Ianaro. I trusted you. You just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Yanaro, you completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. Oh, far out. Paying a price again. Oh? I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I for you to hate me this much? All my friends. I did so many awful things. So many selfish and disgusting things. I... I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world that I don't even belong in. A world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me. Ah, uh, and you know what the worst part is? I basically deleted her out of curiosity. Just, uh, and for the sake of completing what needs to be done. <sighs> Because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... Obsession. I've made up my mind. Ianaro, I know I said that I deleted everyone else. But that was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find it my... I couldn't find it in myself to do it. Even though I knew they weren't real, they were still my friends, and I loved them all, and I loved the Literature Club. I really did love the Literature Club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. 
And if I were really, and if I really love you, then So everyone's back, huh? But not Monica. Hmm. <sighs> I guess new game. Hmm? Did I? Ah, oh, not unseen text. Alright. It's an ordinary school day like any other. Ah! Hang on. Wait! Whoa, 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 whoa! What if... I put Monica's character file back? Huh? Yeah? Come on. Oh, I'm a genius! Alright, Monica, you're back! Yay! Everyone's back. Wait. Is she really back, though? Hang on, main menu. Oh, really? She's not back? Well, I tried. I guess putting her back does nothing. Please stop playing with my heart. I don't want to come back. Oh, okay. Ah, uh, so I can't even bring her back because she doesn't want to come back. Oh, hey Sayori. <sighs> this game is... Ah! I feel like I've been betraying people this whole playthrough. Like, I've, I've always been with Sayori in the first run, then she killed herself. Then I went with Natsuki. And then, uh, you know, then Yuri Natsuki died. And then Monica. I sorta... Monica had feelings for me. And we two sort of returned our affection in some form. But now that Monica's gone and I'm back to this game, choosing Sayori, if, if I ever do, I feel like I'm betraying Monica's feelings. Uh... Eh? I glance around the room. Huh. So you're the Ianaro that Sayori is always talking about. Thanks for Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you, Ionara. So, now she's the president, and these two are just, you know, part of the club, still. And alive! They're alive! <laughs> and so healthy looking. Like, one's not insane, one's not trying to hang herself, and the other is smiling away. Yes! But... There's no Monica, so in a way it feels a little bit empty. Ugh, I just don't know how to feel anymore. He's gonna think we're really strict or something. Ah, sorry Natsuki. The tall one whose name is apparently Yuri seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems like the sort of one. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Ianaro, don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, Sayori. The Literature Club. Sayori's eyes light up. No way! No way! Ah! Sayori wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. H hey! Ha ha ha! Well, if Sayori is this happy, then I'm sure it won't be so bad to have you around. Not to mention, there's four of us now. That means we can become an officially recognized club. I don't know what to say. We have to celebrate. <laughs> what an appropriate day for that, isn't it? Yeah. After all, Natsuki decided to... Hey, don't ruin the surprise! <laughs> Sorry. 
Everyone sit down to the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the room where Natsuki grabs a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Sayori. Natsuki proudly marches back to the table, train hand. Okay, are you ready? Ta-da! Natsuki lifts the foil off the tray to reveal a dozen white fluffy cupcakes decorated to look like little cats. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were used to make the ears. So cute! Wow, those look amazing. <laughs> well, you know. Just hurry and take one. Man, everyone seems so happy now. It's so weird. I'm not used to this kind of happy. I'm used to being... I'm used to there being happiness with a shadow of doubt, pretty much. But now everyone just genuinely feels happy. Except for me, I feel kind of empty. Now she's quiet, I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my direction. Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. Thank you, Nachiki. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro after all. What was that accent? There's no need to thank me or anything. <laughs> As Natsuki struggles to accept the compliment, Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. A tea party! You keep a whole tea set in your classroom? Don't worry, the tea just gave us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? Uh, I guess. <laughs> Already trying to impress our new member, Yuri? Uh, that's not... Insulted, Yuri looks away. I meant that, you know. I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but I at least enjoy tea. Ah, I'm glad. Yuri faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, Ianara, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, um... Uh... Considering how little I've read these past few years, I don't really have a good way of answering that. Manga. I muttered to myself quietly, half-joking. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but she keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is equally impressive. Yuri goes on clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Don't feel intimidated that if you don't read much, okay? I'm certain that we can find something that we have in common. Like horrific books. Well, but, you know, the first thing he said... Manga? That's right. That's a good answer to read manga in the club room. D don't just say it! For some reason, Natsuki seems embarrassed by it. Besides... Mang manga is literature clue too, you know. So if Ianara wants to read something of my manga, then why don't you try? Why then don't try to stop him or anything? Natsuki, I wouldn't do such a thing. However, it would be nice for us to diversify ourselves a little. You could take the opportunity to try something new as well. Would you agree, Ianara? M maybe. Sensing the tension, Sayori jumps in. Maybe we can all try something new. I think it could be fun. And we'll all get to know each other a little better too. I mean, it's the kind of thing literature clubs do, right? I, I don't disagree or anything. Yeah. You're right as usual, President. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you're, yeah, so you're his president. Oh, no, and Monica's... Monica's gone. 
or not gone. She's somewhere in this game. She's, I guess, a spectator now. I wouldn't mind doing it. I mean, I'm not the only one. And as for Yuri, huh? I have to read manga. Jeez, you're not the one. You're the one who suggested we diversify. You should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I didn't realize. And they're getting along for once! Oh, yes! Oh, this is all I've ever wanted. These these two just get along. No more fighting, no more heat gauge. Look at that heat. It's 0%. Oh. And better yet, I get to play logic chess with Sayori again. What about Monica? She's just gonna spectate everything? Is she okay with that? She could still join this game. I mean, I, I know you don't have a route and everything, Monica, but... You know, it'd still be nice to have you around. Really? I mean... It makes me happy that you'd do that for me, Yuri. You can trust me to find something that you'd really like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meeting. J just you? Ha! Would you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always go alone, so... Yeah, me too. This is so cute! Sayori, shut up! I'll show you some manga there, okay? Yeah. I look forward to it. Natsuki and Yuri start to clean up the food. <laughs> I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along! Isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, Ianaro. You think so? So am I just gonna have a glorified harem now? <laughs> see, I'm a bit of a 50-50 with harems in general. Like, harems are comedic. But in a real life situation, harems would be... Uh, it would not work out. Take a look at school days. That's basically a harem gone wrong. Aw, oh, Ianaro. Don't say something like that. It's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was just surprised when you told me you were starting a club. But I think you pulled it off just fine. We're gonna make it the best club ever! Now that you joined, every day is gonna be so much fun. Hey, Ianaro. Huh? I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I already knew you were going to. Huh? <laughs> That's... There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. That's right. Ah... Uh... Ah, uh, I thought we were done with this stuff. No, Sayori, what is going on? I know everything that she did. Come on, can't we just let it go? Let, let this just be a happy club. Come on. Maybe it's because I'm president now. But I really know everything, Ianaro. <laughs> I know how hard he tried to make everyone happy. I know about all the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. Ah! And you made me the happiest girl in the world. I can't wait to spend every day like this. Oh, are you gonna delete those two girls as well and have us sit? In that same room for eternity? Sayori, please! I thought we were done with this stuff. Forever and ever. You know what this looks like? It looks like there's flames in the background. Like some sort of twisted inferno hell in the background. Makes sense. Hey, Sayori. Yeah, we, we can... We can together but just not at that distance please uh forever no huh w what's happening 
I won't let you hurt him. Who? It it hurts. Ha! I'm sorry. I was wrong. There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayori. Goodbye, Ianaro. Goodbye, Literature Club. to find that special day.
Script file is missing or corrupt. Please reinstall the game. Hold up, let me just gather my thoughts, and I will be with you in a few moments. <clears throat> okay, I'm back. <sighs> wow, like, okay, so my whole uh, exaggerated energy aside, this was, this was a pretty good visual novel. Very, very emotion sparking. Well, for me at least, because I'm a guy who, as I keep saying, who can really emotionally connect with visual novels in general, and any video game, really. If the writing is good, and the characters are definitely relatable and, you know, are deep and complex, sure, I can relate to them. I can emotionally connect with them. No exception here. I really did feel immersed, you know? So... When, you know, Sayori hangs herself or Yuri bites the dust the way she does, I just... It, it's really harrowing for me, you know? As for the characters, uh, the only thing I was wor worried about going into this playthrough was that the characters would not be likable or they were, would be complete jerks. Like, complete jerks, right? I'd, or I'd be facing some sort of serial killer. Thank goodness I didn't. Or in, you know, the way I was thinking. I don't know about Monica. You could argue that she's in some form a serial killer. Maybe not the one everyone's thinking about, but you know, she did lead people to their deaths. Multiple. Oh yeah, on the topic of Monica, Monica was a bit of an antagonist, not a villain, okay, because she wasn't pure evil or anything. But she was a bit of an antagonist that did what she did because of the circumstances that pushed her to, you know, do all those sorts of things. You know, she fell in love with someone that was, in her eyes, real, in a world that was not real. And I guess prior to meeting this person, she underwent this state of, I guess, nihilism. Where she believed that life was meaningless and that her world had no real existence. And all of a sudden she meets a real human. She, I guess, grew desperate in trying to secure, you know, someone that meant something to her finally. As for Monica getting rid of the other girls, you know... They became collateral damage because, you know, she didn't want them to die the way that they did. Well, except for Natsuki, she was just sort of deleted. But, you know, it ended up being that way because Monica didn't really know how to modify the code properly. She couldn't make a rat for herself if she wanted to. Or maybe she just didn't have the time given the hero was, I don't know, given four, five days in this roleplay before the game ended and her chance would have been missed. Another reason why she grew desperate is that she was, I guess, on a limited time before the game ended on its own. And then I guess at that point she didn't really care what happened as long as she was able to, you know, be with us. The end justifies the means, as it were. And to some extent, before the very, very end, she didn't really mind what happened to the others because they weren't real in the same sense that we were, so they were just disposable, really. Like, eh, you shouldn't mind them. They're autonomous bots designed to just fall in love with you. Psh. Well, until the very end where she really did care about them. See, Monica is a complicated antagonist, really, which I really like, you know? She isn't linear. She's not pure evil. She's sort of half and half, really. She didn't mean for harm, but it ended up happening anyways because of, I guess, recklessness? Would you say that Monica's a bit of a reckless person? I mean, the way she modified code and stuff and carried about her antics. I'd say it was just a little bit reckless. Well, can't really blame her. She was desperate, as it were. And look, me understanding her motives and her actus reus, as it were, does not mean that I justify what she did. If this were a real-life scenario, right? Like, 
she did, in a way, lead the other girls to their deaths, alright? And I can understand why and how that happened, but it does not make me justify what she did, okay? Just so that we get that out there. And overall, yeah, Monica's a pretty nifty character. She's a pretty refreshing antagonist from all the uh, pure evil and linear villains that I keep encountering, you know? Villains that make me feel sad. Well, Monica also made me feel sad with the actions she took and the fact that she didn't get her own happy ending. Well, I guess she got her own version of a happy ending with us talking to each other and then, you know, before she bit the dust. But uh, I wanted some closure on that. And now she's gone with the game. Now everyone's gone. Ugh. As for the other three girls, Natsuki, Yuri, and Sayuri, you know, tolerable. And they definitely put some life and energy into this visual novel. They weren't bland, but they weren't also irritating. I mean, some people might be turned off by Natsuki's tsundereness, but even I couldn't be turned off by Natsuki's aggressiveness. It didn't overstay its welcome, and she was, you know, cute in some parts. She wasn't completely berating the player like, Oh, you're a horrible pervert baka, you know? She wasn't like that. And as for Yuri's shyness, she wasn't completely secluded and unlikable. Yeah, so they were overall nice. What I like the most about these characters though, is that their interesting character elements lie within the subtlety of the game's hints. What I mean by that is that you find out that Natsuki has an abusive dad. Not through the game directly telling you that she has an abusive dad, but through the little hints and the easter eggs that lie in this game, which I like. I like it when a game invites me to learn more about a character through inviting me to actively use my detective skills and whatnot, you know? Like, uh... When games directly tell me about things, I'd understand if it could, I'd understand if it's because it's you know very complicated, or that I really really need to know something beforehand. But if it if it's too direct for trivial things or things that I'd like to find out on my own, then I'd be like yeah cool okay, and then I'd get bored or whatever. But I, I like how this game invites the player to be immersed. Well, not only immersed in its environment, but, you know, invited to find out more about the game actively. Um, and, you know, if I'm given a chance, maybe I'll go through this again and, you know, explore more the characters. And, you know, I am convinced that this is not the only ending. I think there are multiple endings. Maybe there's an ending where we finally go to the literature festival, huh? Wouldn't that be a blast? There might be also an ending where we stay with Hanukkah and that would just be the end. Maybe that was the end. <laughs> and this is just the epilogue. So story, characters, yep. Soundtrack? Hmm, you know, decent stuff. Pretty catchy, especially the creating the poem one. Nah, pretty catchy indeed. Oh, the music! Oh, definitely! The, the creepiness that comes with some of the tracks really hits you, right? It's like, happy, 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 and then BAM! It, it like, so, slowly starts to descend, and some eerie noises kick in, and you hear some things, oh, it really gets under your skin. And you know what? The horror, the horror elements within this game is good because it is not barraging the game with horrific elements. It's just quick and subtle. That's it. Well, with Yuri, there's blood, obviously, because she killed herself. But it not. It's not a. It doesn't. I mean, obviously, it uses jump scares here and there, but not excessively. Like, oh, you peer around the corner and then bam, monster. Right? No, it doesn't. The, there are jump scares, but the main horror is the, is the oddity within the game and the fact that, like Monica said, that something isn't right. So I like the game for its subtlety, that, that's the thing. What would make a good story that can 
invite the user to em to emotionally expand on the game is if you just keep it subtle not boring all right like nothing's going on i'm just playing visual novel everyone's just a bread and butter characters with no real personality i don't mean that i mean for the story itself subtlety it wins you don't need to shower the walls with blood for you to be horrific i mean maybe that creep me out but if it happens continuously then i'm just gonna be like oh okay it just uh, happened again as for the uh, extra segments i did for this game i just decided to do it you know to really expand my playthrough like i didn't have to do those uh, you know unreal tournament game play footages with quote unquote monica but i did it because I, you know, I really, <laughs> I wanted to expand my immersion into the reality of this game even more by being like, hey, let's play some video games, <laughs> even though it's probably it's not part of this game, obviously. I want to expand on that. Me, I like to expand on things that have already been created using references that I am inspired by. Anyways, I got off in a tangent there. That's just where I come from. Um, yeah. As for my final words, I guess... To those of the future who will be viewing this footage, I don't know how far I'll go in my Let's Play journey. I know I wanted to be an animator, but really, I made this channel solely to be a Let's Player. And, well, I found my gig to be an animator, which... I'm not saying it's inconvenient, but it's a long, long tangent from what I primarily wanted to ensue for my channel. Well, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. In fact, I could make this a hybrid channel. This channel could be animations and let's plays, but people seem to love my animations more than they love si listening to me talking for like 50, 60 minutes. Mm. But to those of the future who look at my very first Let's Play. First of all, hello. <laughs> Second, I'd love to see where I'm at in those few years. If I'm doing well. And if I have improved, I might still be a bit of an amateur right now. Because, you know, I don't know how to be as engaging as those other YouTubers out there. But hopefully I'm doing good. Hopefully I'm in a better place right now. I say this so that you can keep me accountable to what I'm saying right now. So that you can use it in the future saying, This was you before. You wanted a good future, TK35. And look what you're doing now. You're totally squandering it. Okay, well I'm not gonna squander it. But, you know, this is insurance. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, so thanks so much for sticking around. This has been a really eventful, emotionally draining, and um, emotionally sparking playthrough. This has been fun. And, uh, yeah. With that done, I can now move on to episode 6, finally. Hmm. I don't know when this part will get posted, though. So, yeah. Thanks so much. And with that... I leave you with one final poem. Sounds cheesy, I know, but in the spirit of DDLC, I decided to reincarnate an old poem of mine to sound more, uh, you know, more wholesome. A single glance, a single painter, yet endless inspiration poured into his eyes. The sun rose, beckoning the golden light in purest blue. As the painter gazed at the infinite sky, the azure world rolled back onto the grey plains, dissipating the harsh hollow ground. Beyond the marvelous blue, a whole other world could be seen, a breathtaking reverie of another reality. Gazed and observed, he did, for more and more worlds arose, like bubbles floating from the depths towards all perception. Hopelessly, the painter began his exodus to the sky. Brush in hand, a staircase he painted, a staircase he climbed. Hurry, he must, for dusk soon settled, his beloved staircase on the verge of fading, 
The sun fell, ravenous shadows akin to relentless, hungry wolves. The wolves consumed everything in sight, every world, every step. Tearing and clawing at the staircase, the staircase vanished in an instant. As night had fallen on the land, the painter fell into an endless dark plunge. Endless dark pools form around him. His dream ended, his efforts crushed, his consciousness resigned. Looking at the sky, once more he did. His beloved staircase floated in pieces, like the stars beyond all perception. Like bubbles floating from the depths, the pieces scattered amongst the endless sky, joining the endless stars. His eyes closed, saddened, but anticipating the rising of the next dawn. Though it had all ended, he was content, for he wanted the endless blue and sended for the endless stars, all under the same endless sky. This is TK35. See you later, ladies and gentlemen.